this assignment and listening to the SS team and to Mrs. Chile, I'm very convinced that we are prepared to host a group meeting today and tomorrow. It's not about the presence of the governor because I may not be around here tomorrow, but I expect that people will comport themselves today and tomorrow and be committed to this program. Yes, we are gathered here to talk about Delta State and how best we can offer our services. But wherever we find ourselves in governance, no matter the ministry, the department or agency, the first thing we ought to do is to have a knowledge of what we ought to do. Because if you don't have the knowledge of what you ought to do from day one, you've lost track. And no matter how committed you are, you cannot actually perform. So I hope and pray that by now, a few weeks down the administration, the second, during the second tenure, that the very top persons here ought to have gone through some of the documents that we have, like the transition committee report and my speech at, on the day of inauguration, because that already has set a tone for the direction of governance. I believe that we ought to study that very closely, the commissioners, the special advisors, the department secretaries, and heads of other uh, departments and agencies of government. And I think that that is key to what we ought to do. The other thing I need to say is that we must learn to work together committedly. Because most times in government, I find that people are busy trying to create territories around themselves rather than looking for the outcomes, positive outcomes from what their actions in office will bring up. But most times people are just busy trying to have an expansionist kind of um, attitude to where and what I do, what my ministry does, what my department agency does, and they lose focus of the real thing. The real thing is that committedly all of us have to work together we have to have shared approach to governance in such a manner that working together we are able to produce the best result for the people, for those who are truly governed. It's not about our ego, it's not about what we're going to achieve for ourselves, it is about what we are able to deliver as service and goods to the people of Delta State. And that can only be done, not an, in an individualistic manner but by people committedly working together and ensuring that together we are able to excel. I also believe that in every ministry, department and agency, we ought to begin to define our goals. And as we define it, we must also be able to put on paper what our expected outcomes to be. And if you have defined what your expected outcomes to be, you are able to check yourself on a regular basis, it may be weekly, it may be monthly, it may be quarterly, within your ministries, departments and agencies to see whether you've actually been able to achieve the set of actions that you ought to achieve within a given time. But most times in governance, from my experience, people don't just think about that. All we think about, oh, where are the contracts? We have awarded them. You don't even care to do a follow up. And at the end, you probably have delivered the fiscal structures. You are not even looking into whether the fiscal structures have translated to anything in terms of service to the people. So it's very common that we can get lost. Like in the Ministry of Education, we we'll built the classrooms, we we'll put the chairs down. Whether the teachers are teaching properly, whether the students are being disciplined, whether the students are being given the direction that they ought to go, that does not matter. We have awarded the contracts and you believe you have delivered. You have delivered nothing. So, this, if we have this kind of approach in which there is a thing through, where are we starting and what is the end result, then we will know exactly what to do. And planning is very important. 
Many times our departments of planning, research, and statistics, which we have in virtually all the ministries and even in departments and agencies, we have converted most of them to contract awarding departments. And they are busy chasing the ministerial tenders board activities. They don't even remember that they ought to do planning, not to talk of research, not to talk of causing documentations to be in such a manner that they could have something to look up to or something to advise with. That department is supposed to be a strong advisory department based on the documentations of the past, based on the gains and based on the, on the weaknesses and opportunities of the past, but most of them are busy every day chasing the ministerial tenders board meetings. Because why? That possibly is where the money will come out. So it depends where is your focus. It's not about money making, but it's about what I'm able to achieve. And I believe that we need to have a rework of our thoughts, a rework of our approaches concerning many of these things. Yes, I thank God that uh, today is been it's just when I got in here, I got to know. I didn't want to read what uh, the SSG sent to me. I, I want to actually be a participant to the extent that I can. But I got to know that what we're discussing in the planning pathway is to build a stronger director. And I thank God that this is a challenging topic. For the ready mind, it's a challenging topic and there is a lot that we can learn. There's a lot that we can contribute. But the real truth is that if we are going to offer effective governance, it must come from the inside. It must come from the inside. It must be propelled from the inside. And we must take note of that. We are very mindful of the fact that no matter what you intend to do, being able to achieve peace matters a lot. And therefore, as a government, we are putting all such structures in place. Yes, they may look multiple, but we believe that it will help us to achieve results. And whatever you do and wherever you are, this must be a defining part in your heart. That for every program you're doing, you must look into the peace component. For everything you're doing, you must look into the job creation component. Because until we're able to get many more use out of the streets, we cannot really even achieve the peace that we seek. And when we don't achieve the peace, we can't achieve the enabling environment that will enable industries to thrive. And that in itself goes on a cyclical manner. Yes, it's good to build infrastructure by God's grace in the last four years. Uh, we try the best within the limit of resources to build strong infrastructure. There's still a lot that has to be done. But how are we able to best achieve that with minimal resources, like being able to get value for money? How are we able to assure that the infrastructure we're putting in place will last as long as it ought to last? How are we assure that we have proper monitoring of what is going on? I'm beginning to have a situation now where I'm beginning to doubt myself if I can rely on the structures in place to be able to give certification to jobs. And now I'm beginning to create a department of project monitoring, bringing in engineers from outside. But should that ordinarily be? When an engineer decides to put his hand on paper, should he really not be sure of what he's certifying? These are the challenges that we have to think about. If we build a structure today, have we built it to last? Have we just built it just because we want the contract to be done? These are issues that must challenge their minds. Yes, men will make mistakes. But as we go on a daily basis, and as this administration grows, I expect that we should grow out of mistakes and begin to grow into persons who can be trusted to deliver on all fronts. It's very important. As for the health industry, for example, you're building infrastructure, you're providing equipment. Are your personnel delivering as they ought to? The indiscipline that we're beginning to see in the place is it continuing the way it has been in the past? Then you have gained nothing, even if you build the best of hospitals. Because when you don't have the right set of personnel, whatever equipment you have, whatever structures you have, 
have come to a total rest. In planning, for instance, yes, we now have a Ministry of uh, Technical uh, Education. We're planning for new technologies. Are we planning for the structures alone? Are we planning for the personnel? Are we planning on how best we can truly link up the technical colleges with the, with the polytechnics that we have? Is there a futuristic plan? Are we looking into the eventual outcome? These are things that will matter quite a lot. And I believe that there's a lot to do, to do. But the sincerity of purpose, the commitment that comes from the inside, which does not wait for the government to be around. Who does not wait to impress the government? Because your work is not to impress me. Your work is to offer service. Whether you're a commissioner, special advisor, permanent secretary, or whatever office you're class, chairman of a board or director, general or executive secretary, your work is to do what you think is genuinely right in your heart to provide service for the people. Let your service speak for you. Not by pretentiously making the government believe that you are achieving something. I thank God that a few persons here, their actions spoke for them and got them some elevation. Yes, some other people may not have got elevation through that means. But one day, your action will speak for you. If you do well, you don't have to, you don't have to announce it. Your service, your whatever you've done, we announce itself at some point in time, in one manner or the other, to announce itself. So as I welcome you, possibly as the chief host, because there's a distance for me, I believe and hope that you have a challenging two days, and that you try to learn the best you can. Don't see this as a jamboree. Try to learn the best you can. Because when you are truly altered on the inside and fired up to provide services in the best interest of the people and being guided by that to the best of your human ability, because you are not God, you will get an inner satisfaction. And that is all that is important. That inner satisfaction that will make you deliver your best. And God will fulfill the rest of the story. Thank you once more for coming. I wish you the best, and I hope that this will be a very rewarding meeting together. God bless you. Okay, I know we can do better than that. Let's appreciate our government. Thank you. Okay, Angela. I want to introduce our keynote speaker. He took up time.